Loki's been an integral villain and eventual anti-hero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe for years. While he's made his mark in more obvious ways, from inside jokes to crazy comic references, here are the best Loki easter eggs in the MCU. After seemingly falling to his doom in Thor, Loki reappears as the primary villain of the Avengers. Or at least he seems to be. He's actually leading an invasion of Earth on behalf of Thanos, laying the groundwork for Avengers Infinity War six years down the road. Thanos relays his messages to Loki through a hooded character called The Other, who wants to make sure Loki understands how seriously Thanos takes his mission. You think you know pain? While the other delivers his menacing monologue, a snake-like creature slithers meaningfully in the background. Loki doesn't need to be told twice. In the real-life collection of Norse mythological poems known as the Elder Edda, the gods punish Loki for killing Odin's favorite son, Balder. By tying him to a rock with his own kid's intestines while a snake hangs above him, dripping venom onto his face. Loki's wife Sigyn catches the toxins in a basin, but every once in a while she has to leave to empty it. And the venom falls on Loki's face so painfully that he shakes the whole earth. The snake in Avengers may have been a reminder both to Loki and us of just how much pain he's endured in the past. In the end of the Avengers, the heroes save the day and capture Loki so Thor can extradite him to his home in Asgard to face Odin's justice. As Thor carries his brother away, he's locked up not just with cuffs on his wrist but a muzzle on his mouth. That seems fitting for a character who does so much damage with just his words. And it's even more fitting when you know a little about your mythology. In medieval historian Snorri Sturluson's younger Edda, Loki thinks it'd be a good idea to shave all of Sif's hair. When the other gods catch him, Loki agrees to commission the dwarves to make Sif more hair out of gold. Loki offers to pay with his own head, and the dwarves get to work making not just making a headdress for Sif, but also a spear for Odin and Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. When it comes time to pay, Loki agrees, but he reminds the dwarves the deal is only for his head. And if the dwarves take off any of his neck along with it, the bargain is void. The dwarves have no choice but to let Loki go, but they still get back at him by sewing his mouth shut to keep him from smooth-talking anyone else again. Loki's muzzle in the Avengers looks a lot less painful than that, but the parallel should be clear. In Thor The Dark World, Thor and Loki commandeer one of the Dark Elf ships from the Asgardian impound. As Thor and Loki flee Asgard, Thor sideswipes one of Asgard's monuments. Well done, you just decapitated your grandfather. It's a brief throwaway line, but comics fans may recognize its deeper significance. In 2009's Thor issue 600, Thor really does kill his own grandfather, thanks to Loki of course. The god of mischief travels thousands of years into the past to trap the soul of Thor's grandfather, Bor, in the snow, then returns to resurrect him, but not before scrambling Bor's mind so he'll attack everything in sight. As Bor rampages through New York, Thor finally realizes there's no way to stop him except by killing him, all according to Loki's plan, since the penalty for killing Asgardian royalty is exile. Marvel loves sneaking in Easter eggs so much that they're not content to stop with the movies. Even the track list to Thor The Dark World manages to squeeze in a reference that goes back beyond Loki's comic book history to the original Norse text. Composer Brian Tyler includes Loki's theme on the album named Lokar Sanar. It may seem like a bunch of random letters attached to Loki's name at first glance, but it actually comes from one of the earliest surviving references to the character, an old Norse poem collected in the Elder Edda. Even in the Middle Ages, the Loki we know and love was already fully formed. The poem tells of him getting kicked out of a party for killing another one of the guests, then returning to pick fights with other gods and accusing them of all kinds of crimes. Finally, Loki politely excuses himself when Thor threatens to shut him up with his hammer. The end of the Dark World reveals that Loki didn't actually die in his battle with the Dark Elves. In fact, the Odin that Thor has been asking permission to return to Earth is actually Loki in disguise. So when Thor returns from his journeys across the universe in search of the Infinity Stones in Thor Ragnarok, he gets to see what Loki has been up to in his absence. Still pretending to be Odin, Loki is putting on a play that tells the story of his supposed heroic death, 
with Chris Hemsworth's brother Luke as Thor and Matt Damon as Loki. Before we see what's going on, we get a brief look at the stage itself as Thor flies over the Asgardian skyline. The design fits the vanity of the whole project. The whole thing's a gigantic recreation of Loki's own golden helmet with its distinctive curved horns. In Thor Ragnarok, Loki's self-congratulatory play proves that he's probably better off sticking with supervillainy than writing. As Matt Damon plays Loki's drawn-out death scene, he uses his last words to atone for all his regrets, including the events of the Avengers and another thing. Sorry about that time, I turned you into a frog. Surely something that silly couldn't have been an actual story in the comics, could it? Well, in the 80s, writer-artist Walt Simonson took the reins of Thor with an appropriately grandiose mythic take on the character, one full of new worlds, epic battles, and poignant deaths. But he wasn't above a little change of pace to lighten things up a bit. In Thor issue 364, Loki's latest power play involves transforming his brother into an amphibian. Thor doesn't let that stand in the way of his heroism, though and he aids a colony of Central Park frogs in their war against the rats before returning to Asgard. Thor Ragnarok takes a much more light-hearted approach towards the apocalypse than Norse mythology does, but the film does deliver on the destruction of Asgard. Toward the end of the film, things look grim for our heroes, but that's when Loki shows up in a massive ship, accompanied by warriors. As Asgardian refugees flee Hela and seek refuge on Loki's new ship, the god of mischief welcomes them aboard. Interestingly, the younger Edda also says Loki will arrive at Ragnarok at the helm of a ship. In Norse mythology, Loki comes bringing destruction instead of salvation. But Thor Ragnarok's writer-director Taika Waititi cleverly flips the script to suit his more sympathetic interpretation of the character. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite comic book heroes and villains are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.